We're going to go over some stuff in media law for you. Uh, more happy news is uh, uh, it's interesting stuff. It's stuff that every journalist needs to know. Um, but guess what? You're going to do as much work as I am. Uh, this is a two-way conversation. We are going to talk about three different aspects of media law. There are three things, three ways of understanding that every reporter has to know for the rest of what I hope is your long and fruitful and enjoyable life as reporters. Material that's defamatory, material that invades privacy, it's a little different, right? And news gathering that violates the law. Now, the first two, notice that I use the word statements, that's what we publish or what we broadcast. Okay, the second one is not about what we publish. We'll talk about Judith Miller. You've seen a little bit about that in the press. We'll talk about that. Judith Miller did not publish anything that got her into trouble. A lot of people lose sight of that. It is how we behave as journalists that also has very, very severe consequences sometimes. What's your name? Jerry. Jerry. What do, what do we mean by defamatory? Something that's going to make a statement about something that's negative and might not be true. Something that's negative, comma, and might not be true. Anybody take issue with that? No? No one's being graded. I don't even know your names. Well, your last names anyway. I now know Jared and I are old pal. Anybody got an issue with that? Want to add a gloss to that? No? Yes? Is there to take a stab at the person's reputation? That's closer to it. You're both right. You're both in the same ballpark. Because we don't have a lot of time, I'm just going to going to bullet it out to you. A statement that is defamatory addresses someone's reputation. Now, what you did is a very common mistake, and that is you conflated, you added on the truth or falsity part. That's a separate issue. To wit, the beginning, the core of a defamatory statement is something that impacts reputation. You should know. Companies can be libeled or defamed. Products can be defamed. In the U.S., groups cannot. Certainly, individuals can be. All right, what do we mean by defame? Something that takes a stab at, it was a very painterly phrase, but I like that. <laughs> takes a stab at someone's reputation. What kind of statements? Yeah, we, all read, we are, or better be, news junkies, right? I mean, you're in the wrong room if you're not. Okay, what, do we, what kind of statements are generally made? What's your name? Leslie. Leslie, what kind of statements generally stab at someone's reputation? Um, Allegations of, of sexuality? Maybe. Let's put, let's put homosexuality off to a side for a moment. Let's start with some really slam dunk ones. Help me out. Like the, like corruption, like Martha Corruption. No, you nailed it right on the head. Corruption. She's a crook. He's a thief. You're incompetent. I would, if I were you, plastic surgery for him, doctor, not so good. Uh -uh. Don't these these statements attack reputation? Statements that accuse people of criminal acts. Statements that accuse people of wrongdoing. We'll talk about defamatory. That's what we call defamatory meaning. We'll get to the whole part about truth later. Privacy. Privacy is a little different. Privacy at its core is not about reputation, what other people think of you. Privacy is basically a statement where the subject says to you, what business do you have telling him what I do blank? Whose business is it that I'm, who gave us to Tom Cruise? Whose business is it that I'm dead? Whose business is it that my wife had an abortion? Whose business is it I owe Visa $20,000? They may be true. Now, let's, let's back up for a minute. Distinguish privacy from defamation. Honestly, is being gay defamatory? Not necessarily. Every human being has a sphere around them. And we hold certain facts about ourselves within that sphere. And don't necessarily put them out for public consumption. We'll talk about that in a minute. News gathering exactly what the word says. News gathering isn't about what we publish. News gathering is about how we act as reporters. Having a press pass does not give me the right to break the law. Am I allowed to trespass into his house? 
Am I allowed to pick the lock and maybe break the kitchen window and sneak in? Obvious. I mean, you know, we, we paint it that way. It's an obvious no. But these questions become closer and closer and closer. All right? Let's move on a little bit. Any questions so far? Live. Okay? In most states, a defamatory statement is one. You're going to love this. It it's very, very highfalutin language from, the, from actually from the 1600s. Exposes the subject to hatred, scorn, ridicule, contempt, or causes them to be shunned in the minds of right-thinking people. That's pretty, that's pretty broad stuff. So let's say Saroy is an accountant for a big publicly traded company. Everybody with me? And I publish a story that says, Soroya cooked the books. She cooked the books. She lied. She double dealed. I make a statement like that. I, are you going to hire her to be your CFO? Are you going to let your kids be taught by her? Are you going to recommend her for her next job? No. She's going to be shunned. This is the impact of a defamatory statement. Okay? Criminal act, wrongdoing, ethical violation. Are we accusing somebody of shame on you? Now, wait a minute. Hold it. Isn't that what we do? There's a phrase we use at Bloomberg. It's a great phrase called show, don't tell. Right? Oh, yeah. Show the facts. Don't tell. There's a difference between editorials. Let's say I've got photographs of Soroya cooking the books, you know, with the fake documents in her hand. Right? Let's even make it worse. Let's say she gets convicted. Right? Let's say she's arrested and convicted, and I've got, I've got her conviction record right here. Now, isn't it still defamatory? In other words, she's a convicted crook. Are you going to hire her? No. Are you going to hire her? No. Are you going to do business with her? No. So why is it? Why is it that I can publish that? Have every right to publish that? And it's still defamatory. It still has the impact on reputation, but I, I'm not going to get sued. Or if I get sued, I'm going to win. Why? It's right in front of you guys. Because it's true. It's true. It's, this stuff is much easier than you think. There is a difference between the right to publish and publishing what's right. Truth is an absolute defense. Speech in the public interest, speech by a public figure, allows a different kind of defense. Let's say you got it wrong. Look, human nature is to get it wrong. Nobody has ever gone through any kind of meaningful career in journalism without making an error. We don't like it, and there is much grieving and rending of garments when it happens, but look, you're going to make an error. You're going to get the, guy, the wrong guy, you're going to describe the wrong charge. It's going to happen. You're only human, and your editors are only human. Stuff, I almost said it, happens, okay? Well, because stuff happens, does that mean that the public should be deprived of the important information? No, I don't think so either. There is a good faith defense in the United States called actual malice. I am not going to bore you to tears and, and try and teach it to you at the moment. But you should know that if you are writing about a matter of public concern, involving a public figure, you will only be in trouble if it cannot be shown that you had a reasonable, good faith basis upon which to support your story. For example, let's go back to Pusaroya, the, the convicted criminal fraudster. Everybody with me? Now, I got the court document. I went to court. I heard her get sentenced guilty. And then she, you know what an allocution is? You know, people stand up in a court and say, I was wrong, you know, I'm so, I was there. And she said, oh, gosh, I shouldn't have stolen the money, but what can I say? Satan got the better of me. I'll be good from now on. Does that sound like a good faith basis? I have every reason to believe that she really did do it, right? That's basically going to be good reporting. On the other hand, well, I heard from her hairdresser's boyfriend's bus driver, who lives in the same building, that she did it. Right? Well, the shorter you draw that line, the more accurate your stuff's going to be. If I got the conviction record, I was there, I got my notes, I'm good to go. That's basically going to be a good faith defense. However, however, that good faith defense that we call actual malice, 
doesn't always apply. And this ought to scare you a little bit. If you write about a nobody or someone who convinces the court that he's a nobody, right, you will be judged, and I use that word quite pointedly, you will be judged. You don't ever want to be sued in libel. It's one of the most unpleasant, have you ever, have you? No. But you know people who have, and it is one of the most unpleasant experiences. No, you should never be sued for anything, trust me. You will be judged by what's called a negligence standard. Anybody know what negligence means? Help me out, young lady, you. What's negligence mean? Negligence is like, you don't care. Like, you don't care? That's pretty good. Yeah, it's, you got one of the wrong words in there. Help me out, kid. What is a negligence? Uh, you do? don't take proper care to... Uh, don't take, to you do it. not do that which a reasonable fill-in-the-blank would do. If I'm a bus driver, and I'm talking on a cell phone, I'm pulling down a 40, and I suddenly run over, you know, I run over grandma, was I negligent? Yeah, why? Because a reasonable bus driver doesn't do that. There are certain situations about which you're going to report that have what's called a special privilege. You are allowed to report certain instances with absolute immunity, whether it's true or false, whether you knew it was true or false, whether you believe it or not. Those are called privileged occasions. For example, I'm sorry, your name again? Dave. Dave. Dave, and your name? I sell. I sell. Dave, honest, he, he, he looked out his window and he saw I sell steal his classic 1970 Moto Guzzi touring bike. Big, gorgeous, weird Italian bike. All right? You don't drive a Moto Guzzi. But for the purposes of this, he drives a Moto Guzzi. He saw her steal it. So what's Dave going to do? Is any good citizen? He's going to call the cops, right? Okay, and he's going to say, Mr. Officer, I was at my house at 9.15 at night, and I heard the deep throaty rumble of my Italian engine start. I looked out the window, and I saw her get on the bike and drive away. And this cop's writing this down. This is a police report. You as reporters have every right to report that report. That's a privileged occasion. Now, query. We're not going to answer it today. Something I want you to take with you. Okay? You got this police report. Is there a defamatory statement in there? Is somebody being accused of wrongdoing? You betcha. Who? He is. Or she is. Right? Accused of theft, right? Whether the law allows you to just print that as it is or not, ask yourself this question. Does she deserve an opportunity to respond to you? You're about to print that she's a motorcycle thief. Or at least you're reprinting what he said. And let's say she's got a phone book. She's in the phone book. And you've got her email address. Do you have a moral? Moral. Forget legal. Do you have a moral responsibility to at least try? Call her up? Yes? No? Maybe yes. So. You say yes. No? He's, no? It's an issue that you guys will wrestle with. And I will tell you as a lawyer, when I read a story that accuses somebody of doing something wrong, the first thing I look for as a lawyer and as a reader is, what's her side? I'm saying something bad about somebody. What's the next question you need to ask yourself? Because a good editor is going to ask you this question. Read along with me. Can you prove it? That's all. So, how do we prove what we know? How do we prove what we know? Official reports, company filings, notes, tapes, research. Privacy. Privacy isn't about what other people think of me. Privacy is about my feelings. How dare you publish that I'm fill in the blank? Medical data. Children. Always a red light. Always a red light. Publishing facts about children should always give you pause. Make you think about it. Personal tragedy. Who had an abortion? Who lost a child? Who lost a brother? Think about it. Financial data. Home addresses. Want to be very careful about it. Want to be very careful. Doesn't mean you can't, but you want to know, hey, this is one of those things. And people's sexual lives or, or personal lives. What is it that justifies the publication? See, and that's how privacy matters are, are adjudicated. And frankly, that's how they're discussed in the newsroom. On the one side, you've got the privacy interest. Hey, man, this is private. This is kind of offensive stuff, right? It's personal stuff. But what's on the other side? Help me out. Um, what's the counterbalance to that? Um, 
The public's right to know. The public right to know. Public almost need what to know. needs to know. Need to know. That's exactly right. And that's what you have to ask yourself. That's how you work through privacy problems. News gathering. We have this notion of a, what's called a reporter's shield. I don't have to tell you about that. We have this notion that a reporter should not be forced to give up their confidential sources. Now, here's where Judy Miller comes in. Do we, do we know the facts of this? I mean, I can't run through them all, but the, the, the cheap shortcut is that through various and sundry investigations of other reporters, it is learned that Judy Miller from the New York Times, who is hated, hated in the newsroom, has, learned, has been told the name of a CIA operative. It is a crime. It is a federal crime to release the name of an operative. Doesn't matter whether you publish it. Giving somebody the name of a CIA agent is a crime. The federal government says we have a right to investigate. Judy, who told you? Judy says, I stand on the reporter's shield. Right? Well, I mean, and the fact of the matter, again, full disclosure, um, the court said we disagree, the appellate court said we disagree, the Supreme Court said, sorry, we're not even taking it. Could it be that the shield is only as strong as the low threshold of danger? In other words, so someone let a CIA guy out there. Low threshold, she shouldn't go to jail. On the other hand, what? You knew who blew up the mosque? You knew who blew up the path train? It was about to. Well, let's even say they did. Let's even say they did. Does that matter? Does that, yeah, you would think so. You would think so. The law does not recognize that. If it's a crime, the government's going to want to know about it. This is far from over. Theft and misrepresentation. Gee, where do you think I stand on this? Are we allowed to steal? But, but the public's right to know. No? Famous case. Famous case in D.C. Pearson v. Dobb. Pearson was, you know, a great investigative reporter. And he sent somebody into Senator Dodd's office to go get documents out of a file. Eh, not going to work, obviously. <coughs> Misrepresentation. Real cute problem. What, there's what used to fly and what doesn't fly anymore. There's a famous case called Food Lion out there where they wanted to discover whether or not the stores, the food line in the supermarket, was, was selling bad chicken. So what they did was they got people, they paid people, ABC keeps doing, they paid somebody to go apply for a job under false pretenses. And the company didn't sue them for libel. The company sued them for trespassing and false pretenses and fraud, and it was a real mess. And by the way, you should know, you should know, that the court did what it thought was the Solomonic, the wise thing. In this case, they found ABC, they upheld the verdict against ABC. They were found liable for fraud. But because of the public interest, the judge said, okay, $2. Damages, $2. And the lawyer thought he you know, was really cute. He was marching out of the courthouse holding $2, like, yay, I won. Well, he won for ABC that week. But the precedent, a little more Latin, stare decisis, the case has been decided. The law stands, guys. And maybe ABC got away with it for two bucks, but you may get clobbered for two million. The law stands. You cannot misrepresent yourself. Eavesdropping. Recording telephone calls. Anybody know the law in New York? Can I record any phone call I want? No, actually you can, as long as you are a party to the call. In other words, you do not need, in New York, permission to record your own phone calls. Not so in other states. Florida, California, Michigan requires what's called two-party consent. Very tricky issue. Um, am I ever allowed to record a conversation that I'm not a part of? No. That is a federal crime. That's called eavesdropping. And that's a bad, bad thing to do. Undisclosed interests. This is an ethical issue that is huge for reporters. And, I, and you, your mind would spin if you saw some of the people you would think, really good people, not mentioning that the positive movie review I gave, oh, my husband was the producer on that, but that didn't affect my, that didn't affect my judgment, of course. 
Well, you know what? All I'm going to say about that kind of ethical issues like that, you know what? The appearance of impropriety is as bad as impropriety. Plagiarism. Yeah, I see people shaking their head. Look, because we know that from school. Obviously, you guys know this is this is this is a zero. Trespass, <laughs> we talked about this before. You do not have the right to go. Well, let me let, let's put this in a positive note. Yes, you're reporters, but you know what? You're human beings too. Hard to believe the truth. Especially you. Um, the fact is. You have every right to go where anybody else, the general public, can go. What does that mean? Lobbies of office buildings? Yes. Public buildings, hallways? Yes. Sidewalks, streets, and alleys? Yes. Does that mean that I can go over to the General Motors building and march up the stairs and go into someone's office? No. Where the general public is allowed. We generally use the receptionist test. And it comes out to be a pretty common sense question. For every day, every story, you must ask yourself, what is it reasonable for a reporter to do? Am I meeting the standards of good journalism? You're on the side of the angels. Never forget that. You guys are on the side of the angels. And you have to be, and this is more about ethics, but you, you know what? You've got to be as pure as the people that you're holding up to ridicule. You know, but again, an editorial comment.